Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and obviously I am, Nigel, please. Obviously I'm in a new setup right now. It's not a new, a temporary setup. I'm in a hotel and I'm gonna try to be as succinct as possible in this video because I had to turn off the AC because it's very loud and um, it's hot outside. I'm in the States, I'm in Louisiana. If you've missed it, that is where we have moved to. I'm not happy about it. We're not happy about it, but I would say I've come to terms with it. I'm still struggling, honestly. Um, so any any thoughts you may have about how much you feel bad for me? Trust me, I feel it. <laughs> Trust me, I feel bad for me. The self-pity through the roof. The self-pity parties I've been throwing, out of control. You wouldn't believe it. Absolute ragers. But it is what it is for now. This is the hand I have been dealt. So, you know, all those who wished me terrible things, your wishes have been granted. Um, so yeah, this is a book community. This may be split in two parts. Depends on how long it goes because the hotel Wi-Fi speed isn't great. I was uploading a video that was like under 15 minutes and it took over an hour so this video i think if it's over 30 minutes i'm not even go i'm just gonna have to split it in half and do part one and part two so um i think those are all the disclaimers the last one would be living out of suitcases is rough and so this appearance is rough please don't comment on it or you are anti-black thank you let's continue um <laughs> So we have some mess. I'm gonna try to make it as clear as possible. This is one instance where I really wish I had my whiteboard because wow, it is chaotic, but I'm just gonna do my best without my visual aid. But before we get into the mess, I of course have to thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now, I started using Surfshark when I moved abroad um, because I got there and was like, oh yeah, I can't watch all the same things I watched when I was in the States because I'm now in a different country. Obviously, I'm now back in America, so I have all the US Netflix, HBO and things, but sometimes you wanna watch something on UK Netflix. And also it provides security to all of my accounts and devices so Surfshark is amazing um, especially being on like public Wi-Fi like I am now it protects you and there's all these benefits you can get one Surfshark account and it literally you can have unlimited devices it's ridiculously affordable um, they have I don't even know over 60 plus like countries you can connect to there are many many benefits to Surfshark and since you are a lovely follower of mine if you use my code which is Owens O-W-E-N-S you get 83% off and then three months free from Surfshark. Don't do the math because I don't know if it's math then but that's what they told me. That's what they told me so I'm telling you O-W-E-N-S Owens is the code. You click the link in my description I get you 83% off at three months free of Surfshark so like <laughs> you're honestly doing yourself a disservice if you do not try it out um and by clicking that link and then using my code it shows them that I sent you and that supports me and my family so <laughs> thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video but I'm gonna go ahead and crack open my laptop because we we really don't need any further delays <sighs> I'm like, what do I even start with? I think maybe the most convoluted thing out of everything. And where's my phone? Okay, mess. So I'm gonna try to set the scene here. The biggest thing, there are two big things that I wanna talk about and then some smaller ones. The two big things are about Anna Mardal, who is a person on Twitter, and then also about the Department of Justice versus Penguin Random House and the Simon Schuster merger. Are they both gonna be in this video? I don't know, you have to stay tuned. So there's always gonna be timestamps for these kind of videos down below. Let's start with Anna Mardal. So I'm gonna put up the image here of what their like avatar looks like on Twitter. I have never followed him pronouns are he him um but I know of him because anytime not anytime but a lot of the time there's twitter discourse especially book twitter because they he has written books I think they were self-published though Anna Martel will pop up this little I, I'm like oh I know who that is and he is very much known on the twitter sphere as being like one of the most outspoken like 
SJWs, social justice warrior people on Twitter. So if something came out, he spoke up about a lot of books saying this book is ableist or this book is transphobic. Um, I know I've used a lot of his tweets in my videos because again, he's usually talking about something that's book community direct or at least adjacent. So like the book by Sandra Newman, The Men, that a lot of people were saying was transphobic. Anna also said that. And also I recorded a video, I never uh, published it, but uh, Anna took the time because at the time when the, the men was announced and was being talked about, it hadn't come out yet. So people were like, well, how are you calling this book transphobic and you haven't read it? So Anna got an arc, I think, and read the book over multiple days and had like super long thread with like pieces and screenshots from the book saying like, well, yeah, it's transphobic. There's racism in here, all these other things. So I forgot where I was going with this. Anyway, that's who Anna Mardal is. If you are relatively on Twitter, especially on book Twitter, you've probably seen this person come up quote tweets, screenshots, whatever. Recently, there was a tweet. Let me see if I can find it. So recently, I think this was mid to late July, so the last couple of weeks, Anna tweeted, there's a thread going around mocking writers who don't read very much and I'm trying not to haul out my soapbox, but this is ableist. Not everyone can read for pleasure or indeed at all and some of those people's people are writers. I did not see this thread because I saw this later. And so it was quote tweeted by Brandon, Brandon Taylor, who is an author. And he is a black queer man. So he quote tweeted this and just said, Oh, okay. There was mixed feelings on Brandon on what he said, because then after this, he said, LOL, y'all ain't about to put me in your little newspaper saying I'm doing violence with my tweets. Everybody who writes and does not read should be celebrated. Congratulations to everyone involved. And then I think a few days later, people were looking um, for the tweets or looking for his account and couldn't find it. And people were like, well, he just deactivate, deactivates his account from time to time when he's trying to focus on writing. And people are like, no, he ran off Twitter. But then on his Instagram, he had up stories that said, I am told that y'all are being very dramatic over on Twitter, LOL, be chill. I know this is a wild, this is wild to contemplate, but my job is not Twitter. And therefore from time to time, I deactivate my account to do the work I'm actually paid for, LOL. It is not more complicated than that. I have several books under review, a novel to prepare for publication, a move to plan and execute, an award ceremony to attend, a doctor's appointment to deal with, student work to read, and several events in the next couple of weeks to prepare for. So I deactivated my account for a few days to do some work. Again, wild to contemplate, but some of us are busy. Also, it's summer, go outside. Side note, it's hot outside, Brandon. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, and then he said, I am often asked, how do you get so much done? The answer is never more complicated than sometimes I deactivate Twitter and just do it. LOL. Anyway, can someone put this on Twitter so people stop freaking out? LOL. See you next week. That was a lot of LOLs. But anyway, so that is what happened. And so some people were saying that Brandon was being ableist by quote tweeting this and saying this and that people, some people were like, well, yeah, how are you an author if you don't read? And I... I'm gonna be honest, I was confused with the initial tweet by Anna because I'm like, what? I just, I wish I had seen the thread, but I don't know, a thread going around mocking writers who don't read very much. Now, very much is different from don't read, can't read at all. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm missing something because I'm like, if you can't read, Can you write? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to be a smart ass. So it's like literally just how my mind is like, I'm not getting it. Like, I understand if you're an author and you don't have a lot of time to read. That makes perfect sense. A lot of authors cannot write full time. They have full, full time jobs. They have families um, or maybe just other interest. But I just don't get that if you can't read, how do you write? I don't know. That was just a jumping off point. So Brandon had deactivated his Twitter. People thought he ran away. Obviously he said, no, I'm just trying to get some work done. His Twitter is back now. But some people were saying that he was being uh, ableist or transphobic because Anna Mardal is a trans man. Um, and so of course, you know, the way Twitter is. So, so I saw that and then that kind of died down. Then I got back on Twitter a couple days ago and I was seeing Anna Mardal trending and I was like, 
I know that name, I know that name. Like I said, I don't follow him, but I just see him often. And I was like, I know that name. And I clicked on it and I was like, why is this person trending? And then I saw Lockheed Martin trending and I was like, oh dear goodness. So I'm gonna look up a definition so I'm not lying to you, but I don't have all of the, how the timeline of this, how exactly it happened. Apparently there's a website called like Kiwi Fruit or something that's kind of like 4chan. It's a kind of, um, I want to say Reddit, it's kind of like a discussion website, but they're not always discussing great things on it. And apparently they doxed Anna Mardall and found out their dead name and like where they worked. And so someone, then Anna felt like it was necessary to say this, to go ahead and get ahead of it because he knew he had been doxed. He was like, I'm going to tell you what I do. So. Anna tweeted, I've been made aware that someone is trying to dox me and everyone I know in the process, so I might as well address some things here. I'm sorry I have to do this. I work at a large corporation, which I will not name. I work in software licensing, procuring text editors and code compliers for others. This is why I know so much about Creative Commons. For those that enjoy that thread, I do not produce code for anything. I got this particular job because my family works for the same corporation. I stay because I'm on it an unusual part-time arrangement for medical reasons. It's hard to find a remote work from home job that will give me medical insurance, but let me work 10 to 20 hours per week. So then someone quote tweeted this or like took a screenshot and said, hey, question, why won't you name Lockheed Martin? Is it because it's one of the largest defense contractors that provides arms to, um, what does that mean? Oh, that provides arms to Israel and played a role in American imperial reaches in both Iraq and Afghanistan. $75 billion in Pentagon contacts in 2020 alone. So Lockheed Martin is an American aerospace arms defense information security and technology corporation with worldwide interest. It was formed by the merger of Lockheed Corporation and Martin Marietta in March 1995, headquartered in North Bethesda, Maryland in the Washington DC area. So their main thing is that they um, research, design, develop, manufacture, um, advanced technology systems and arms, which are weapons. Um, and so you know that America has evolved in everybody else's business but their own. And we don't need to go down that route. We know America's terrible past, present, future. So this exploded because like i said before anna is known as like number one leftist care about social issues person on twitter at least very outspoken on everything like if there's an ism a phobia a something anna is going to talk about it if he sees it and then it comes out that for the last 15 years Anna has worked for one of the largest, I don't know if they're the largest, arms, basically dealers, terrible corporations. Like how do those, how does that work? And I'm saying, this is not me, this is what people have their thoughts. There's of course a lot of tweets. And then there were more tweets from people who were mentioning things that Anna had done in the past that also now look really sus because working for Lockheed Martin in like whatever kind of tech role that they're in, granted he did say 10 to 20 hours a week, but there's just like a list of things. So it's the fact that he said, he got this job because his family worked for them. So legacy hired, nepotism, baby, whatever you want to call it, has been in this job for the last 15 years. A lot of people assumed that Anna was a lot younger than he actually is because to have been in this job for the last 15 years, he's at least 35, 40. A lot of people were saying 40 because the avatar looks very young. And apparently someone said that he used to have trans boy in his bio on Twitter. Now it just says inactive and has his pronouns. Um, so there's that. And then that they apparently, and I again, I guess this is from people who were doxing him, found out that they live, they live in, or they had this really expensive house, like a $400,000 house. And I can't confirm if he either is still in that house or sold it, but was asking for money for all the years that he's been online, um, via, you know, PayPal, Kofi, Patreon and I guess at times has been like saying they need money because they are 
have a mental illness, have a physical disability, is trying to transition, like all of these different things and people felt like a kinship, a connection, felt really connected to Anna and wanted to help even if they barely had anything at all and yet they're working for this billion dollar corporation and asking regular regular poor people for money. Um, like people were saying crowdfunding your mortgage and cosplaying as a poor struggling person while working at Lockheed Martin as a nepotism hire for more than a decade couldn't have even imagined this one up for the Twitter bingo card so it's like I like I don't I don't know of Anna going back that far and I can't find like exact receipts of that but I did go to like his website and you can see where he talks about what he does for a living and he doesn't talk about any kind of like formal job outside of you know writing um books and articles for various websites and whatever else I think he had a YouTube channel so it never mentions that and people just find that really sus that all this time you have family who work there so they in theory have money you've been working there for 15 years but taking money from rent from strangers on the internet because you portrayed yourself as this person who needed this money when it doesn't appear that you need it again we don't know his um circumstances someone else said this stopped being about anna over 24 hours ago at this point i'm not even focused on him it's all the white people on the tl admitting that they totally think working for a bomb factory is okay if they give good health care y'all are actually the ones keeping this trending because you're gaslighting the whole internet with this shit and shocking people who thought you actually believe the shit you pretend to believe your jokes about yemeni children and defense is keeping it going um and i guess well and this is a turn of phrase i've heard for a while that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism and i guess that was something that anna talked about a lot and people are like well how are you going to say that and then also like people realize here's I'm going to pause for a moment and stop talking about what people are saying and here's my thought that everyone who has a job does not necessarily believe in the morals of the company because sometimes you just gotta work i don't think everyone who works at chick-fil-a is homophobic everyone who works for walmart wants the waltons to be these trillionaires or everyone who works at amazon worships jeff bezos like i do not think that at all um so that's just my personal opinion but i what i don't know because i've never really thought of it is if you proclaim yourself to be this person championing causes for marginalized people for jo social justice issues can you both be that and work at a company that like literally works against the causes that you champion for you know what i'm saying like i i don't know and i would love your thoughts okay end of my thoughts back to the general atmosphere on Twitter so a lot of people like I said are very upset um so I'm just gonna keep sharing tweets there's no ethical consumption so it's okay to lie about being poor and grift thousands of dollars off people who actually need the money because it feeds your sense of self-importance that's one of the most galling parts how are you a homeowner and getting a bunch of people you'll who will never own a home who have been actively shut out from even the possibility of ever owning a home and no small part by the very industry you work for to pay your mortgage for you and just sold the house which daddy bought for them for four hundred thousand dollars so for i don't know when i saw this i don't know the timeline maybe it was a couple days ago and then i went to look for anna anna's account and it was i don't know if it was like deactivated or it was just private and then right now it's back up but it says inactive and it has his pronouns and then he posted like a thread uh today that i'm filming this so anna said i am leaving twitter because it is clear to me that any attempt to stay would harm people i care about including myself i am sorry for many things including the pain i have caused our community thank you all for the kindness you show me over the years for those who have asked for a response to various allegations i am unsure where to start or how there are some things said about me which are true and many things which are false but which are now so enmeshed in the image of me that any attempt to clarify seems futile one thing I can respond to is the allegation that I harassed Isabel Fall or condemned the publishing of her piece. That is false. I am unsure where this is coming from, as this is the first time I've ever been accused of even being involved in that situation. I can only assume, as with some other pieces of misinformation floating around about me, that I have been conflated with some other trans person. I support Isabel Fall and condemn the harm that was done to her. Please do not harass anyone on my behalf, either now or in the future. Please take care of each other. Beyond that, I don't know... <sighs> I don't know more what to say except that I am sorry and I will miss you farewell and stay safe so that was their message and I guess that is um, what their last 
thoughts on Twitter are going to be. And of course, there are more people um, who quote tweeted this thread. Um, and one says, I want people to realize this person works for Lockheed Martin and has a very good salary after being there for 15 years. They begged for money for DoorDash for taking cats to the vet from the poor disabled community. They sold their house for $400,000. They begged for money from the literal poorest people, people who have limited incomes, who can't have more than $2,000 in assets. It is vile that they did that. They cosplayed as a poor person while taking money from poor people. It's disgusting. I gave money to them and I'm angry. I'm disabled, poor, and trans. We couldn't afford laundry soap and trash bags. Yet Anna Mardall, who has money and a well-paying job, took money from poor people, scum-like behavior. I'm angry because you don't get to cosplay as poor. You infiltrated a community that didn't fucking belong to you and people actually felt bad for you. And that pisses me the fuck off. The fact that people are missing this or don't care pisses me off. It's fucking gross. I'm not attacking them for being trans. I am trans. I'm mad because they took advantage of people's empathy, of disabled people's limited income. It's wrong. It's disgusting. And scum-like behavior, you are gross. You hear me, Anna? Vile. Adding, criticizing a trans person does not make me transphobic. A transphobic Nazi. I am trans. I'm disabled. I'm a socialist. I'm not a fucking Nazi. I think that's an important thing to add that it's really hard, especially on the internet, because obviously communications can always be misconstrued. Um, or loss in translation, if you will, that anytime you're criticizing a person that has any marginalized identity, I think the first thing anybody on that person's side or that person themselves are going to say is that, oh, you're doing this because you're this phobic or you're blah, blah, blah. And while a lot of the times that is true, it is not always the case. And you, people who belong to marginalized communities still have to be held accountable. Um, I just feel like sometimes it's easy to criticize and then go into these other like racist or transphobic or all these other areas. People kind of just slide into that. <sighs> okay, it's been 23 minutes talking about this one. Our favorite person, Lauren Huff. If you don't know who Lauren Huff is, I'll try to link my video if I can remember which one it was about Lauren Huff who wrote a book. I think it's a memoir was smoking some bad weed, got mad that she got like a four, four and a half good star, good read star review and then like went, lost it on Twitter and she blocked me. Um, so, but I saw mentions that she had written some piece. So I went to a different Twitter account that isn't blocked <laughs> and I found it. Now this piece is written on Substack and I read the whole thing and I feel very conflicted because Lauren Huff is a piece of work and has multiple times been the Twitter person, whatever personality of the day because she's ridiculous. Um, but I think there are some fair points in this piece but then also towards the end she starts losing me again. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because it is kind of long but she starts out with like, because I think part of uh, Lauren Huff's story that she wrote in her book was something about a cult that she used to belong to and so so she talks about the cult and how there um, basically was someone in the cult who or someone saying they were from the cult who really wasn't who was basically uh, portraying to people that they were living a life that they weren't you know alluding to Anna right so that's the first part of of this post and of course I'll link it down below so this says, if you are somehow aware of Anna Mardall, save yourself, close this window for the love of God, read no further, go enjoy your not very online life that I envy, send me a postcard. Well, you're already here, so you're going to stay here. Still here. All right, huh? All right, then. The first thing you need to know about Anna Mardall is that Anna Mardall is not real. I know he's been the main character of Twitter for a couple days. I know his defenders are saying he was doxxed. I know half of Twitter is dunking on him because he works at War Crimes Inc., but Anna Mardall isn't a real person. Anna Mardall, the innocent, ever so earnest, kiss mate loving, cat hoarding, twee trans boy of Twitter fame, is the online persona of a near 40 year old person who is a software engineer at Lockheed Martin. There is no Anna Mardall. Now, I don't want to take any person's identity from them. And if that is, I don't know if that's just what they chose to go by online or if that's what he really went by in real life. Um, I'm just reading this, but that's just how I feel about that. 
Anna Mardal, the character, has been a scourge on the internet for years now. He developed his character on Tumblr and moved on to Twitter where he perfected it. His craft was harassing and terrorizing authors who did what he could never do, that is, write a thing anyone would want to read. But Anna Mardal found another way to make a name and sell his self-published books. He weaponized his carefully crafted identity and used it as a cudgel against anyone who crossed the imaginary line he made up in his head that morning. He changed his story about his past and his ailments and financial situation constantly. He posts takes so outrageous, the word humane is insensitive to people who identify as animals and reading as ableist. They could only be described as bait. Then he'd wait for the mockery. As soon as he found a large enough target, almost always a queer author, he'd attack. He never said go harass this person until they delete their account or have to check themselves in for suicidal ideation. Few of his followers would have rallied to the cause. What he did instead was claim the author was attacking him, sending their thousands of followers to harass him, threaten him, misgender him. The myth of the attack followers, while absolute bullshit, not supported by any evidence whatsoever because authors generally aren't running shit stirrer accounts, was nonetheless easy to believe since it's exactly what Anna was doing. The misgendering was an easy mistake. The character Anna Mardal's name is Anna. Add a feminine presenting pit crew and block the person you're attacking so they can't see your pronouns. Misgendering is likely outcome and Anna knew it or he'd have put his pronouns after his name. Most would default to what they thought they saw or to gender neutral terms such as they. You can argue intent if you want, but I never intentionally misgender a person. Like most of us and most of the people Anna went after on Twitter, I'm a queer woman who's fucking trying my best like everyone else. And I don't actually enjoy hurting people, That, but that wasn't the point to Anna. Once his target was made, the gloves were off. Uh, the offender, while quickly correcting the mistake, was labeled a transphobe. Again, Anna only ever did this shit to fellow queer people who aren't actually sitting around on the internet looking for a trans person to kick. Anna's followers, some of them fellow shit stirrers, but mostly from what I can tell, young queer and trans people with real problems and real enemies, would see their friend Anna being attacked. Because Anna told them he was being attacked, harassed, threatened, and they'd rush to defend him. Anna would continue the assault by posting out of context tweets and twisting anything he could to continue painting his target as a transphobe and ableist whatever he felt like charging that day. To be very fucking clear, I don't actually think his followers had any idea what he was doing and what he was using them for, any more than they knew he was working for Lockheed and living in a $400,000, 2,000 square foot house while asking them to donate money for cat food. His followers were mostly queer and trans people, many of them on the brink of homelessness or worse, under attack from every fucking corner. They likely saw themselves in Anna, a fellow survivor in this hellscape. Anna held himself up as their righteous defender, one of them. Not as he, not as he is, a 40 year old with a legacy job at Bombs R Us. All Anna had to sell when it came down to it were target lists for those who needed to lash out. He made them feel like they were doing activism. Sure, you can't hurt Greg Abbott, but here's a queer author who's literally as evil as Greg Abbott. And Anna had to sell it because Anna Mardall needed a lot of help. He had medical bills, he needed a 3D printer, he needed cat food, I shit you not. He needed to escape Texas and move to Chicago. He needed to qualify for a house and his followers were glad to help. Of course they'd help. When he wasn't fighting, he was burnishing his identity. Just a small Twitter busker who liked gaming and cats and kissed me, his partner. Anna Mardal is disabled and autistic and frequently ill with a smorgasbord of diagnoses. Anna Mardal's had it rough. His parents disowned him. They paid, then they paid for college. Then they loaned him the money for college. Then they paid his medical bills. His parents are wealthy and supportive, but then they threw him out. He grew up in a cult. He got a concussion when a pack of toilet paper fell on his head. He had a fall and he's a new liver. And his parents got him a job at a major corporation he won't name. But it's a part-time job, according to Anna Martel. The only job he could get with his degree and 15 years of experience as a software engineer at fucking Lockheed. It's only a part-time job, but he had to take three days off work to read a book. The book is The Men by Sandra Newman. Though he can't read because of his many medical condition and he only works part-time. There are a thousand Anna Martels on every social medium. They just can't catch a break, it seems. They have some of the worst luck. It's a tragedy, a new one every day. Please donate. Best anyone can do in most cases is block them and move on. Be glad you weren't worked into the saga. But this Anna Mardal is special to me because Anna Mardal once led an attack on my friend Sandra Newman who wrote a book. A now critically acclaimed book that had at the time not been released but then Anna decided it was transphobic before anyone had read it. This is where they start to lose me again <sighs> because Lauren defended Sandra then Anna got the book, Anna read the book, did a super long thread on Twitter about the book and so I still don't I saw a lot of trans people on Twitter saying that that book is harmful and is, transpho is transphobic but then Sandra Newby came out and said I'm non-binary and I don't I I don't know this is a genuine question if you're non-binary does that mean you can be you can't be transphobic <sighs> anyway it keeps going um but talking about Sandra it brings up the Isabel fall 
um, situation again and then she goes on to like link Brandon Taylor's book Sandra Newman's book and said as far as I know Isabel Fall doesn't publish anymore but um I think I don't know I think some of that is valid because there are some people who live on the internet and we obviously don't know who they are in person we've never seen their face we've never heard their voice and they just love causing chaos and drama um they're on every social media site and of all these things obviously the Lockheed Martin thing has been confirmed and I don't know about the other things because I wasn't aware of Anna Mardal when he was asking for all these different donations and stuff. But if all of these things are true, it really, it just makes you not want to believe anyone. Like, there are so many people who are in terrible situations, who are really down on their luck, who need help, like legit. And this just, you know, puts another check on the mm, be suspect of everyone because they're trying to grift you um so yeah it makes me sad if all these things are true because so many people you know are so selfless and will give up to the last dollar to people who you know they think have it worse or are asking just because they feel a camaraderie a camaraderie a closeness with that person and yeah some i did see some person i can't remember said that they don't think the outrage would be as big as it is if Anna Mardal wasn't trans I don't know how maybe not um let me know your thoughts I just I feel hoodwinked bamboozled led astray um because I saw them so often and just you know was like you know this is a person a queer marginalized person who speaks on these things and usually I would read threads and be like yeah, these are just some good points and now I'm just like hmm did I not read it enough? Like, did I contribute to this in some way? I don't know. It makes me feel weird. Obviously, I never am like, unless this person is, is literally like, I have my PhD in this research thing. I never try to say this is the definitive right answer. Um. So yeah, I don't know. It makes me feel weird. It's very weird. It is just a lot. Um. So I really want to know what you think because a lot of people have been like, well, you've been working this long. Surely if you were, you cared about social issues so much that you could find another job, apply to another remote position, maybe part-time. Um, I know insurance is a big thing because America, ugh, health insurance is very much the ghetto. I just per usual, I think is a nuanced conversation. And of course it's Twitter and people are gonna get up in arms and are probably attacking Anna and sending him really nasty messages, I can't imagine. Um, but also, if he really did have all this money, still has all this money and is just asking people for money, you know, pretending to be poor and needing all these things, that's really fucked up. I don't know I feel like that was a lot and my camera's at 34 minutes so this definitely is just gonna be this the I'll have to um, film the other stuff in another video but I just if you've been seeing that around I feel like a lot of us are very familiar with Anna Mardal even if you didn't know the name off the top of your head um, do you think it's wrong with like I assumed they were young too just from the, the photo do you think that's wrong to kind of give off this wrong vibe about your age Mm, lots of things let me know I said a lot of things I would love to know your thoughts but also keep it cute respectful be kind or you will be blocked okay oh my mouth is dry but uh thanks so much for watching <laughs> and stay tuned for part two um I will give updates about the Penguin Random House and Department of Justice case because it has the the trial has started and I will give you more information on that and keep y'all up to date as that is going on and a couple other things in the next video. But thank you so much to Surfstart for sponsoring this video, everyone who watched. <laughs> if you'd like to give it a thumbs up, think about subscribing. 
Anything I mentioned to link will be in the description. The entire video, I was like, girl, we're glowing today. And I thought it could be fun in some videos where I'm like, this is what I use today. You know how people are like, I'll link my makeup or whatever down below. So just really quickly, and of course I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not an esthetician, this is just what works for me. A lot of skincare is trial and error. So, you know, I'm just telling you what I use. I have combination skin. And so I use this La Roche-Posay um, Effaclar cleanser, which has salicylic acid in it for my cleanser. And then I use this e.l.f. Uh, coconut mist as in hy a hydrating toner. I did my snail mucin, oh, so good. I did more toner. And then I did my Paula's Choice Omega Complex Moisturizer, love her. And today's superstar, I mean, all of them are, but it's Beauty of Joseon, their sunscreen, literally, <laughs> it's like butter, but like good, not butter. It's so amazing. This is a Korean sunscreen. Um, all of these, like, you can, I think you can get La Roche-Posay at like Ulta, Target, Ulta, you, Paula's Choice, whatever. The only one, um, this, I'll have a link, I have a, like an affiliate link to Style Vana. That's where I get all of my Koreans, um, Korean skincare. So if you want to get this, this is so good along with another one that I didn't use today. But anyway, that's all I use. I don't know if this is interesting. So let me know if you're using any of the same products or whatever. And then as for a body sunscreen, I'm currently using this Hawaiian Tropic because it's like a lotion sunscreen and it smells really good. Okay. As well as the link for Surfshark, ways to support my channel. Um, if you want to join my Patreon, anywhere you want to find me on the internet, how to contact me, all that stuff down in the description. So check that out. But I hope you all stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.